Hi, I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. Welcome to Training Minutes. In this month's segment, we're going to discuss a single point parallel lift. In this scenario, we have a person pinned under the front end of a vehicle. We're going to show how we would do a single point parallel lift to free this person. Once on scene, the first thing that we need to do is walk around the vehicle to do a survey. We're looking for any hazards and the possibility of another victim underneath the vehicle. Once our scene survey is done, we want to stabilize the opposite side of the vehicle, in this case the passenger side of the vehicle. The firefighters are going to come in using step chocks, they're going to stabilize this vehicle. We want to stabilize the opposite side of the vehicle so that when we lift, we don't have a negative reaction. As we lift the driver's side of the vehicle, the passenger side of the vehicle is going to want to dip down. By putting the step chocks into place, we're going to avoid that. Uh, the reason that we would do this is that our patient is pinned under the vehicle. Any downward pressure could further injure that patient. So now the vehicle is stabilized, we're going to walk around to the driver's side and we're going to set up for our parallel lift. Our single point parallel lift. We want to have a point midway on this vehicle. On a four-door sedan, we have the B-post here between the front and the rear door. We're going to build our lift stack right on the rocker panel midway on the vehicle in order to lift this vehicle completely up parallel and even. Firefighter's going to come in with his airbags, build up his lift stack using four by fours and two by fours. We never want to put any piece of our body underneath the load. So what he's doing is he's using the 2x4 to push the cribbing into place. He's creating a solid base for his airbags. We always use stacked bags. We put the bigger bag on the bottom, the smaller bag on top. The advantage of stacked bags is we get added height. The additional firefighters are coming in and starting to build up their, their capture stacks. Anytime we're going to put rescuers under a load, we want to capture that load first. We don't want to rely on the airbags for stability. Their job is to lift the load, not to stabilize the load. So it's very important that we build capture stacks in this instance. The firefighter building the lift stack has utilized the pad, a plywood pad on top of the airbags. This is going to distribute the surface area a little better. It's going to allow for a more even lift. Okay, our capture stacks are just about completed. Our lift stack is in place. As we can see, the plywood pad is secured snugly on top of the airbags and in contact with the other side of the vehicle. So as soon as we start to inflate these bags, we're going to get reaction. We don't want to waste the airbags lifting up to make contact with the underside of the vehicle. We want to build right up to the underside of that vehicle so that we can get the maximum out of our airbags. We're ready to lift. Up on red. Stop. Up on green. Stop. As we lift, the firefighters are stabilizing the load as we go along. We lift an inch, we crib an inch. Once the load is stabilized, we can continue to lift if we need added height. Up on red. Stop.
Uh, once we've reached our desired height, we can back the airbags down and capture the load with our cribbing. Firefighters will finalize their capture stacks so that we can accomplish this. Back the airbags down just enough so the capture stacks capture our load. Once the load is captured, we can move around to the front of the vehicle and attempt to extricate the victim. As with any extrication, we would want to perform C-spine immobilization, properly board and collar this person before moving them. I'm Paul DiBartolomeo. Thank you for watching this month's segment of Training Minutes.